Hello everybody, this is Loki from the DCS Lancaster mod team and uh, I wanted to walk you through a big update uh, we haven't done in one in a while. Um, so here we're going to cover cold start, we're going to go through the EFM uh, conversion since the last update um, and hopefully we can get from this parking lot uh, to the sky all under her own power. Um, so let's get into it. So we're in a cold and dark blank, everything's off. Um, so first thing we need is ground power. Chief, turn on the ground power. Copy. Ground power is now on. All right, we have ground power. Awesome. Um, so to start the engines, we need fuel. Um, I'm in the pilot position presently. Uh, the flight engineer's position is down here and you can see the fuel panel so I'll hop over to the engineer's position so we can see it better. Uh, here we go. So at the bottom uh, in the black dials we have uh, fuel quantity in each tank. Above that in blue is the coolant temperature for each engine. Above that is the oil temperature for each engine. And on the left you have controls for the fuel pumps. So let's go ahead and turn on the panel, switch at the bottom. You can see the fuel pressure lights have gone on uh, because we haven't started any of the pumps yet uh, and we have fuel in the uh, number one tanks on each side and not the others. So we're going to go ahead and switch to the number one tank uh, for each side. We'll select it and turn on the fuel pump for those tanks. Now you see the uh, fuel pressure lights have gone off so we have pressure at all four engines. Uh, which means that we can hop back here and walk through uh, the pilot startup. Uh, so we are going to need magnetos, turn those on. We will also need the boost coil. Uh, this gives us spark while the magnetos aren't turning fast enough to do so reliably. Uh, and we're going to start with the number three engine, that one there. Uh, let's uh, put it to full rich and crack the throttle a little bit. Uh, go ahead and hit the starter. All right, she's spinning. And there we go. We have ignition. Okay, set the throttle back. Uh, and we can go ahead and do this for number four engine as well, uh, full rich. Now in the real aircraft somebody has to go into the landing gear bay and prime the engines. Uh, we're not going to do that here, it's a, that's a future feature. And so we get number four turning. All right, there goes number four. And you can see they're idling a little rough. Uh, that's to be expected, they are cold. Uh, if we look down here, you can see that the coolant temperature well, hasn't come alive yet. Alright, so now we need to do the other side. Uh, and for that, there's a bit of a trick. So there's a uh, undercarriage indicator switch that we have to toggle. You see the uh, lights for the gear have come on, and that uh, releases the magneto switches for the left side. So now we are good on that. We're going to go ahead and start number three, number two rather. Again, crack the number two throttle a little bit. Get her spinning. And, uh, all right, there goes number three. Uh, now, since we're under our own power, we can Turn off ground power. And that leaves us uh, just number one to do, so full rich. Power's off, great. Throttle. Spin her up. all four engines turning. We can turn off the boost coil. Don't really need that. Um, 
Okay. Pretty much ready to roll here. Uh, so we're gonna taxi out to uh, just uh, over the on the right side there uh, to get to the runway. Uh, for taxi, we need to put the coolant, uh, rather the radiators, uh, to full open. Uh, as opposed to automatic. So we'll do that on the left side, right side. Okay. There we go. Uh, now we're gonna steer on the ground with differential brake and differential throttle so I can, uh, for example, turn on uh, throttle just number one, uh, maybe one number one and two. So we have, because we've switched over to an EFM, we have individual control of all four engines and individual temperatures. Uh, each, each engine is its own entity. And so we're kind of rolling along here. I'll just give it a bit of uh, wheel brake. Uh, so combination of wheel brake and rudder uh, directs your portioning valve or the, the, I guess the brakes uh, sight. Just a bit more uh, left thrust. Not too much. I'm using keyboard binds here. Uh, I don't have a four throttle uh, quadrant of any sort. Uh, just regular X52. Uh, so, if you have a good idea for how to configure keyboard controls for four engines, please let us know. And here I'll just make my turn. So we are more or less aligned. Um, we'll correct as we roll out, especially because engine torque will take us to, this, to the side. Um, level out the throttles. So pre pre takeoff checks. Uh, we need to turn on the flaps indicator. That enables the flap meter. And to actually activate the flaps, we can either use keyboard control. Uh, so I'm hitting keyboard. Uh, or we have a lever down here, which is the clickable, and uh, that's flaps down, flaps up. Um, so if we want this at around 15 to 20 degrees flap, uh, we have a full load of bombs here, so this will be a long takeoff. Uh, next, uh, things to check uh, engine temperature. So, uh, yep, uh, all four engines are up to a good temperature. Uh, let's put our radiators back to automatic. Alright, uh, and last last thing to check, uh, let's jump into the bombardier's position. Is our bomb bay door open? Yes, it is. So that's, that's not going to work. Uh, there's a lever down at the bottom there in the bomb bay. You can see the bomb bay is closing. much ready to go here. Um, one last check. The supercharger speed should be in MS for takeoff. You don't want to overboost or risk overboosting on takeoff. Uh, FS is really for 
11,000 feet and higher. And here we go. So when we get to 100 knots, uh, rather miles an hour, I will lift the tail and we'll float off the runway at around. speed before you do anything too crazy. She's heavy and she needs to get going. Alright, it's 150. Race the gear. speed you pick up the more lift you have so that's that's kind of the game here. Raise the claps at 160. Still positive climb. This is the vertical speed indicator in thousands of feet per second. And we are up And after about 200 miles an hour, you can start to maneuver safely. Merlins are purring along. And there we go. That's our cold start to takeoff procedure. All in one take. Uh, now I'll go ahead and demo some of the other features. So because we have individual engines, uh, if you happen to lose one, which I'll simulate here by turning off the magnetos for the left side, you'll immediately get uh, a yawing moment. And, and there she goes. Turn it back on. And we're working on the, the damage model that makes that an actual gameplay element. Uh, other things, the bombardier's position is, uh, is moving along. Uh, we have the bomb site update. Uh, previous video. Uh, this hasn't really changed significantly since then, just minor improvements in usability. Next, uh, we've looked at the engineer's position, but uh, we've added, you know, art is being added uh, as we continue to develop the internal model. And yes, it has gaps. Uh, this is part of development. And uh, another area that's grown quite nicely is the navigator's position. Um, some of these will be covered. Well, okay. focus on flying here. Uh, some of these will be featured in the next update. But you see uh, all the navigator's equipment for finding out where you are and where you're going, including a cup of tea. And that about concludes today's update. Thanks everybody, and we'll see you in the next one.